The U.S. Gold Depository at Fort Knox, commonly known as the Gold Vault, or I prefer it, Gold Fortress, was uh, constructed in the late 30s. During the 1930s, we were in the Great Depression. President Roosevelt decided the only way to bring the economy out of its situation was for the government to control the money, the manufacturing of the money. In 1933, President Roosevelt signed the Gold Act, which basically made it illegal for people to own gold. People turned in their gold coins and things of that sort, and the government melted them down into gold bars weighing approximately 27 and a half pounds. Well, as the 30s rolled on, there was a problem in Europe by the name of Hitler, and they were concerned about our gold reserves, which were kept at New York and Philadelphia, being attacked. So they decided to construct the gold vault at Fort Knox because it was a thousand miles inland from the eastern coast. It was west of the Appalachian Mountains, which at that time was a reasonable barrier. And also it was the home of the new armored force for the United States Army. So they decided that would help protect it. The uh, gold vault itself is a two-story building with a one-story basement and is built primarily from poured concrete and steel. There is some granite that was used in the outer plating and so forth. It's really a unique structure. Coming from New York and Philadelphia to Kentucky, the gold was shipped on trains. The gold was actually shipped by U.S. mail. But once it arrived at Fort Knox, the military provided an escort, an armed escort, mind you, from the railroad siding to the gold vault itself. At that point, local farmers and other people who were hired by the Treasury Department actually loaded the gold from the trucks into the gold vault itself. And believe it or not, the gold shipments were actually advertised in the local newspaper, and you could go down and watch them. My connection to the gold vault is I was hired in 1975 as part of a, a group of young people that was chosen by the Treasury Department to help them do audits at the vault. Uh, the audits uh, were an outgrowth of a 1974 visit by uh, United States senators and Congress people and the media to the depository in answer to uh, a lot of politicians and pundits saying that there was no gold in the depository. In 1975, they started doing audits of the compartments at the Bullion Depository. And those would go over the next decade, they would audit that building, the counting of the gold. Uh, they would weigh it, they would assay it. I got a phone call in the summer of 1975 from a man who um, was with the school board and he asked me if I would like a job. And I said, yeah, I was gotten out of high school and I was, you know, looking for work. And I would spend the next 11 years doing various jobs for the United States Mint because we thought it was going to be like Goldfinger. Fort Knox, the world's biggest bank. All of us had seen Goldfinger, and so our whole idea of what we were going to be in was what we saw in that, that movie. Then you realize you're, you're going down into the basement, and you're basically in an OD green, typical military facility, and the gold doesn't sparkle, and it isn't fancy. It weighs a ton, and you drop one on your hand, you'll break every bone in your hand. So the glamour wears off about bar number two, and you realize you're not getting to take any of it, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, it's not Goldfinger. The U.S. Gold Depository at Fort Knox exists to house America's treasures. And uh, initially it started as a uh, depository for, for gold bullion and later on has developed into uh, a kind of a holding cell for a lot of other things beside bullion. Uh, over the years it's housed uh, some of uh, 
the great treasures of America, like the U.S. Constitution and the Bill of Rights. And they also held, in fact, during that time period, the Magna Carta, the British Magna Carta, keep it out of the hands of the Nazis as they amassed great treasures. And they had such things as the crown of St. Stephen there once. There were the Hungarian crown jewels into the 1950s and stockpiling of drugs inside the gold vault uh, for, for use in, uh, in the manufacture of morphine and stuff in case of nuclear attack on the United States. The security at the gold vault has been updated over the years, but even in the 1930s, it was considered to be the ultimate. They made it the most secure place on Earth. In the earlier days, security at Fort Knox was good, but today, it's almost unbelievable. We used to be able to drive tourists up in front of the gold vault and take a picture of them standing in front of the gold vault the way you would in front of any other government building. Nowadays, if you go by the gold vault and pull out a camera, they'll confiscate it. In the post-911 world, it probably is everything it should be security-wise. But as one who was there in the 1970s, security at the Bullion Depository was mostly legend. Guards carried Thompson submachine guns and 38 caliber you know, pistols. I mean, it was, it was old school, old school FBI stuff, you know bunch of metal stacked in a building, that's not fun. It's more fun to believe that you've got pop-up machine guns and that you've got minefields and ground-to-air missiles, you know, and I can flood the vault. The security array around that building over the years has grown massively. When I was a kid, there were trees all around the gold vault, there was woods all over the place there, but it's not like that now. So after 911, I mean, Fort Knox went into serious lockdown. And as you know, to this day, you can no longer stand out on the street, take pictures. Uh, these, these guys take security very seriously. When you say Fort Knox, Kentucky, most people think of the gold vault. They even forget that there's soldiers at Fort Knox. Even if you go to a foreign country and you say Fort Knox, they know what you're talking about. It is one of those things that makes us kind of who we are. We say to ourselves, you know, we're a powerful country and the wealth of this country is world renowned. And I think if you go into any country in the civilized world and you say Fort Knox, they say gold and they say the United States. <laughs>